What's going to drive our economy now that the mining boom's over? Hi, I'm Michael Yardney, and Australia's economy was sheltered from the worst of the infamous global financial crisis in 2008 by a fortuitously timed resources boom, spurred on by China's insatiable appetite for almost anything we could dig out of the ground. However, although the mining sector has in no way breathed its last breath, the end of the construction phase of this boom, as well as lower commodity prices, have heralded a significant industry slowdown. The fact is, we're never going to have another big mining boom like this again. So now many pe people are questioning, well, what's actually going to drive our economy forward here on in? Now that's an important question for property investors, and one of the answers lies in our rapidly expanding and internationally sought after services sector, while the other is right over our heads, our housing markets. The government's been counting on our property sector to buoy up our economy, not just to accommodate our ever-growing population, but also to keep money moving in this new economy. Where once real estate was all about the, the great Australian dream, a wave of property investment that started a new wave that started about four years ago and really got rolling as interest rates steadily fell, has slowly but surely transformed our relationship with housing in this country. It's now become a delicate balancing act as financial regulators uh, are trying to stop speculative investor activity, uh, especially in the sectors in Sydney and to a lesser extent Melbourne in the property markets which have been so driven by investors. And APRA has recently stepped in to stop the ever flow, flowing tide of property investor loans. It's important to remember that rising property prices are generally driven by two main forces, supply and demand, mainly population growth, and the wealth of our country the wealth of the people in the areas, and that dictates affordability. Of course, rising house prices are one of the few things currently giving consumers confidence in Australia's economy. I remember reading not that long ago, previous Prime Minister Tony Abbott admitting he wanted house prices to keep rising. In other words, to preserve and maintain our perception of national wealth, the property markets must remain buoyant, and clearly the government and the financial sector, services sector, they've got a vested interest in the ongoing stability of bricks and mortar, as much as you and I do. The good news is earlier this year, the intergenerational report forecast Australia's population growth is going to keep rising, maybe a bit slower, but it'll double uh, to by 2055. However, the age number of older people is going to dramatically increase in Australia, especially the people over 65 years of age. This means the government must keep bringing in new blood through favourable immigration policies to boost our case of appropriately qualified professionals to support the next big industry set to lead our economy forward. And this is going to be the services sector. I remember reading a report released by the ANZ Bank and Price Waterhouse earlier this year entitled Australia's Job Future, The Rise of Asia and the Services Opportunity. And what it said was that continued domestic growth is going to be driven by our rapidly expanding services sector. Interestingly, service related industries like finance, engineering, education and tourism already employ 9 out of 10 people and account for 75% of our GDP. And it's the services sector that's nurturing the relationship we built with China during the mining boom. The report suggests services could be worth $163 billion in annual exports to our Asian neighbours by 2030, supporting over 1 million jobs locally. As a property investor, this is the industry sector you need to know about because this is where employment opportunities will lie in our future generations and many new immigrants are going to come here seeking accommodation close to their workplaces because they're going to work in these industries. Historically speaking, property prices have always increased more in urban areas close to the major CBDs. And the reasons are obvious. Employment, amenities, infrastructure, they're all more widely and readily available in and around the big smoke. Given that most service industries are city-centric and regional unemployment levels are on the rise, it's fair to assume the majority of our future economic growth and jobs growth and wages growth is going to be localised to pockets of the inner Sydney, Melbourne, Brisbane and Perth markets over the coming years. Sought after postcodes near our big cities where we anticipate to see a spike in accommodation demand with people wanting convenient access to their high paying city based jobs is where we want to be. What's more, modern day yuppies, remember those from the 80s, young upwardly mobile professionals, yuppies are going to be willing to and be able to afford to 
pay a premium for housing in higher priced inner urban locations to avoid that hellish outer suburban commute each day. At the same time, Australians are embracing apartment living in ever greater numbers. And as competition for the inner urban dwellings becomes increasingly fierce, these more affordable, high density living options will gain increased favour with younger generations of homeowners and tenants. What this means is we can expect the already, already considerable price gap between popular inner suburbs and the middle area suburbs and inner suburbs, I guess really, and the outer suburbs to widen more, which makes an investment in quality apartments or townhouses in popular areas, those areas popular with tenants and home buyers working in the service industries, they're going to be the right places to invest, that's going to be a sound prospect. At Metropole, we've done a lot of research to work out where these areas are going to be, where those locations are where wages growth is higher, because people are working in those industries where wages growth is higher. If you'd like to find out where to buy those investment properties, how to buy the sort of property that'll be in strong demand in the future, why not have a chat with the team at Metropole? We have no properties for sale, but access to every property on the market. We've got offices in Melbourne, Sydney and Brisbane. If you're a beginner, we'd love to show you how to get started in property. If you're an experienced investor, we'd really like to have a look at your portfolio, see how it's working, see if we can make any suggestions and be part of your wealth creation. Music